Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John Art and I'm your instructor. This is part two of a two-part lecture on how to cast gem material in place using a Delft clay casting system. Now in the first part of the video, I talked about the gem material that's appropriate for this and I also showed you how to prepare the mold. In this second half, I'm gonna go over what type of material is appropriate for this and what you're actually going to need and I'm also going to review safety considerations. So let's start with that. Number one, the first thing that you need to remember when you do this is to tie back your hair, push up any long or loose sleeves and take off any excess jewelry that's just going to get in the way. You'll also need to wear protective clothing. I would recommend natural fibers like cotton don't wear things like nylon because they can ignite or melt instantly. Also, wear closed-toed shoes. You don't want any molten material on your feet. And you need to work with proper ventilation. If you don't have a ventilation system like this one, we have a video under our safety heading that can teach you how to make this. Or you could work outdoors or somewhere where there's open air. Now, you also want to remember to put on your safety glasses while you do this and most important stand up you don't want to end up with a lap full of molten metal so stand up when you do this process okay so let's talk about the items that i have in front of me first of all i have a container of map gas with a burns o -matic nozzle on it now if you check the description to this video, you'll find a link that will uh, sell you this particular nozzle. Now, the other things that I have here are, I have casting flux, I have sterling silver scrap, I also have sterling silver casting grain, I've got a porcelain crucible with a handle on top of a ceramic kiln shelf, and I'm working on top of a piece of concrete board. These two things will help to prevent the heat from the casting process from transferring to my table surface, preventing a fire. And of course, I have the mold that I'm going to cast. Okay, now let's talk more specifically about some of these things. Let's talk about the casting flux. This is very, very important to the operation. It helps to keep the metal clean, free of oxides. It also helps the metal to melt. And you use it to season the crucible, which means covering the crucible with a layer of the flux glass so that the molten metal doesn't stick to it. Now, I've got a bunch of sterling silver scrap in front of me, but the thing that you don't know is that there is no piece of scrap in there that has any solder on it solder is just going to mess up the process. So as you sort through your scrap, be sure that you don't have any soldered jump rings or other material that's going to potentially screw up the process. Now, I've got a little container of casting grain right here. This is very, very clean casting material. And this is generally what most casters use in their casting process. Some experts, though, say that for this type of process, that it's best not to use the casting grain. Personally, I've done this process on my own many times, and I find that using a blend of scrap material and casting grain works just fine. I usually use about a 50-50 mix. In other words, half of this, half of that. A question that I'm always asked is, can I use sprue buttons or other pieces cut off from previous castings? The answer is sometimes. And generally what I would tell you is if you're going to use that material, remember that it's been through the process before. It's probably pretty dirty. So you're going to have to weigh a little more heavily on the casting grain in order to get a re good result. Now, the uh, other thing to, to mention here is how do you determine how much to use? Well, if you used a master to make your mold that was produced in sterling silver, all you need to do is weigh that master and add about 5 to 10 grams more of silver in order to create the sprue button. Personally, 
I kind of guesstimate it, which eh, maybe isn't the best thing to do. But if you're a precision person, if you've made your model or your master out of, say, wax or acrylic, what you can do is weigh that, that master that you made and multiply the weight of it by the specific gravity of the silver, which is 10.4. That way you'll know how many grams it will take to make the actual piece. And then you can add five to 10 more grams for the sprue button. Okay, so like I said, I kind of guesstimate and I tend to work with this material. So let's just say that I know that my piece is probably no bigger than that. So I'm just gonna add that to the crucible. Now I want to have a 50-50 blend and you can see when you're working with scrap it's kind of difficult to determine what's 50-50. I'll give you a hint though. If you have a scrap jar like mine, if you take the bigger pieces off the top and set them aside, you've got a bunch of smaller pieces at the bottom and then that way you can kind of do the same sort of guesstimate in your hand the same way. So I'm going to add that as well. Okay. So all that's really left to do is to melt this material, pour it into the crucible, and let this air cool. Now, one other precaution I wanna point out, and that is, it's customary that when the material starts to melt in the crucible, that you add a pinch of the casting flux to make sure that you reduce the oxides. But something that you may not have encountered before is that when you throw that pinch in, the flame gets a lot brighter. So I, I would recommend averting your eyes from the flame when you throw that pinch in and maybe say a magic word. Okay, so I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna get ready to cast. I'm going to let this cool down and when I come back I'm going to show you how to open the mold and clean up the casting. The mold is cold to the touch now so we're ready to open it up. Now remember when you open your mold don't twist it because you'll end up with Delft clay everywhere. Just pull it apart gently. All right and here are the two halves. Now it looks like we got a complete casting but let me show you how to clean this up as you're revealing your casting. So let's deal with the bottom part first. First thing I want to do is I just want to scrape away the charred residue that's in the Delft clay. This charring can act like the talcum powder that we use as a mold release when we put the two halves together. So I want to get rid of it because it just reduces the efficiency or effectiveness of the Delft clay. So be very judicious. The Delft clay is something you're gonna to try to hang on to and retain. So you just wanna get rid of only the, the charred part and whatever might come out with it and nothing more. Okay, that's good enough. Now we're ready to take this piece out. The way that I usually do this is I'll turn to the back I'll take the handle of my paring knife and I'll just push it out. That way I can then just remove any charring that's on this surface. And then set that aside. And now I can just cut the charred areas away from my casting.
and we've got quite a bit of the Delft clay caught in the middle. So I don't know if the stones are in there or not. So let's take a look. Let's cut this out. So I'm just going to be careful with the tip of the blade. Now I'll switch to a toothbrush. And look at that. Voila! We were very successful. We have a top synthetic corundum upside down with the pavilion facets and culet up. And we have a white CZ with the table and crown facets facing up. So both ways that you could capture the stone in the Delft clay using a direct casting technique. Now I want to say something before I end this video, and that is when you watch me perform these tasks, it's very easy or it seems easy for me to just pull things open and there they are, voila, they're perfect. But you have to remember that I've been making jewelry for over 30 years and have a lot of experience. Your first results may not be as successful as mine. This may take you several tries before you get one that's successful. But believe me, with practice, you're going to have a lot of success and you're going to create a lot of beautiful items. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And remember, if you're not yet a subscriber, hit the button in the lower right hand corner of the screen and you'll instantly become an OJA subscriber. We regularly post interesting items to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we have paid courses on udemy.com. Thanks for watching.